Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the previous set of videos, we looked at how we can use theta roles, theta grids, and the theta criterion to limit the power of X-bar theory, which is known to overgenerate the number of sentences it can produce because it uses variables. In this unit, we're going to look at a refinement of X-bar theory to see how it can be used beyond the simple cases of transitive, intransitive, uh, and ditransitive verbs, and we can look at more than argument structure, we can actually look at selection of other categories. Uh, so in this particular video, we're going to talk about the selection of and by functional categories. Uh, in particular, the selection of complementizers, the selection by complementizers of TPs, and the selection of determiners uh, for other determiners and noun phrases. So let's start off by talking about the selection of particular complementizers by particular verbs. So let's look at some data. Let's start with the verb think. The verb think can show up uh, with a couple of different kinds of embedded clauses. You can say, I think that Art likes his beer, and I think Art likes his beer. Those are both finite non-questions. Um, if you try to make it a, uh, a, a non-finite clause, the sentence becomes ungrammatical. I think for art to like his beer is terrible. I think art to like his beer is terrible. And also, it's the case that think doesn't allow embedded questions marked by the complementizers if or whether. So, to state this generalization, the verb think doesn't allow non-finite clauses and doesn't allow question clauses. So we can mark this um, just uh, informally this way, and we're going to want to code that in a theta grid. Let's look at another verb. This is the verb order. Order can take a complement clause with that, or a finite clause without that. So I ordered that Art drink his beer. I ordered Art drink his beer. Um, it's a little odd to say I ordered for Art to drink his beer. That's a little strange. But uh, it is okay if you put enough context on it. I ordered Art to drink his beer is perfectly fine, but the question form is terrible. I ordered if Art uh, drank his beer or drinks his beer. So the pattern with order is you can't have an embedded question. Notice that's different than the, the constraints on think. Let's do another example. This is the verb inquire. Now inquire um, doesn't allow embedded clauses that are not questions of any kind, whether they're finite or non-finite. It only allows questions. So it disallows that, it disallows the null uh, declarative complementizer, and it disallows all the non-finite complementizers. But it does allow questions. So how might we encode these into um, a structure like uh, a theta grid? So first of all, we need to talk about some features. So let's use the following two features to distinguish among complementizers. There's Q and finite. Finite here is, refers to a kind of C. This is important because we're going to come back later to talk about um, uh, categories of tense node, and one of those will be infinitive. So infinitive is different than finite. We're going to use finite here. And you'll notice that that is minus Q plus finite. That means it's not a question, and it is finite. There's a null form of that in English, which has identical feature structures. Uh, we also have the, um, the non-finite forms. So they have a negative value for finite. They're also not questions. Again, there is both a overt form, which is the for form, and the null form. These, so these pattern identically within the sentences we've already seen. And finally, we have the complementizers if or whether. And these are questions, and they're also finite. There is, of course, one missing here. There's no um, form that's a plus Q minus finite. Uh, 
Uh, that just seems to be a gap in the paradigm. All right, so now let's come back to those verbs and look at how we can use these features to account for which kinds of complement clauses, or CPs, can appear with which kind of verb. So the verb think requires an agent, or a, maybe it's an experiencer, and an embedded clause um, that is a CP that can't be a question, so you can't have if, and it must be finite. You can't have non-finite forms. We can contrast this with order, which simply requires um, you can't have a question, so uh, the embedded form is a question. And then finally, we have inquire. Inquire requires that it be a question. Now, you'll notice I also put in the feature plus finite. That's maybe not necessary because plus Q implies finiteness. But just for completeness sake, I put in the plus finite. So these three theta grids get at that distribution of clause types that appear underneath these different verbs. Okay, let's now move on to a case where we're looking at where complementizers do the selection. So they choose the kind of TP that follows. So first of all, we can note with sentence number one that the complementizer that takes any kind of embedded clause. It doesn't care whether it's a progressive, a present tense, a past tense, uh, whatever, um, a passive, but it does not allow non-finite clauses as in sentence one. So Heidi thinks that Andy to eat the salmon flavored candy bars is not grammatical, whereas all the other forms are. So um, how are we gonna mark this? We're, we've got to first of all identify one kind of tense node um, that marks, um, that, that shows up with two. We're gonna claim that two has a special feature plus infinitive. Again, notice this is not the same as the feature finite, which is a property of complementizers. Um, and we can state the restriction on that the following way. We can say that requires a TP that is minus infinitive. So it'll take a TP that's headed by anything other than um, an infinitive marked by two. So again, here what we're doing is we're using complement, we're using um, theta grids to explain the distribution of selection and subcategorization. Now let's turn to uh, a different domain, the domain within the DP or NP. Um, let's look at the pattern we have for determiners. Um, you can say the muffin, a muffin, the muffins. So what we have here is the can appear with a singular noun, a can appear with a singular noun, the can appear with a plural, but a cannot appear with a plural. So critically, we've got to distinguish the from a in that the can appear with both singulars and plurals, but a can only appear with singulars. To make it richer, we also note that neither of these two um, determiners can appear with a proper name uh, or with a pronoun. So you can't say a Andrew, um, a him, the Andrew, the him. Those are all ungrammatical. Um, a Andrew might be okay when you're trying to, uh, you can imagine a situation where you have a room full of Andrews and I say, oh, I don't care who, just pick an, pick an Andrew. Um, but that's not um, the case that we're interested in here. So looking at this, uh, the theta grids here, then A and An, um, they cannot take a plural. Uh, they cannot take a proper noun and they cannot take a pronoun. So by using the features of this noun phrase, we can talk about what noun phrases can be complements to this determiner head. Um, by contrast, the, um, just like a, uh, can't take proper names and pronouns, but it's unspecified for plurality. It can appear both with plurals and with singulars. So the lack of a plural feature here under the explains why it can appear with both forms. Um, this actually leads us to an interesting question. Um, do all noun phrases have DPs on top of them? Well, there's good reason to think that they do. So for example, let's take the verb to strike. 
And strike requires an agent and a theme. And in the theta grids that we uh, created in unit eight, um, you had to specify what category these things were. So you wanted to distinguish between cases where something showed up as a prepositional phrase or as a noun, as a DP. Um, in this case, you have required two DPs. You can say, the man struck the rock, and that's fine. We have two determiners, two DPs. But it becomes problematic when um, you take a case like, uh, she struck it, uh, where we have two pronouns, or a case where we have plurals, um, bare plurals, without any determiner at all. Raindrops struck rooftops. There's no determiner here. So what do we do about this requirement on the verb strike that requires it be a DP? Well, the solution is to claim that there are actually null determiners. Um, and in fact, we have to propose three null determiners. We have to propose one for proper names, um, zero proper, and it takes noun phrases that are headed by a proper a noun, Z pronoun, which uh, shows up with pronouns, and Z plural, which shows up with plurals. Um, this then explains uh, why these items like pronouns and bare plurals can in fact appear in these slots that are otherwise specified for DPs because we have null determiners um, that had them. Now, here's an interesting case. Right at the beginning of the, the series of videos, we talked about the fact that in most cases, you can only have one determiner. In fact, we used that as a criteria for figuring out what determiners were. But we have cases where we appear to have one, more than one determiner. So take the case of all. And we have this DP here, all the women. And this is really tricky for us. Uh, it was especially tricky for us um, with our phrase structure rule system. X-bar theory, it's not so much a problem. It appears to be two stack determiners. But um, we want to make sure that the determiner all can appear on top of another uh, determiner phrase. So we're going to have a tree like this, all the women. You'll notice we have two determiners. Um, and we specify this in the theta grid um, by saying all can take a DP. Contrast this to the theta grid we might have for the. The takes a noun phrase. So the reason you can't have another determiner in this position between the, between the the and women is because D selects for a noun phrase as its complement, whereas all selects for a DP. Um, there, um, there is a challenge here um, worth thinking about. Uh, which is the sentence, all women. And I'll just leave that up to you for a moment, but think about what we just talked about on the previous slide about null determiners.